human beings, we feel embarrassed. So we have this gen general good and bad, we recognize it. But we would say the details of what God wants from us, this can only come from a messenger. And then lastly, the third uh, purpose of the messengers is to tell us what's going to happen after we die. Because regardless, Muslim, Christian, Jew, atheist, everyone is sure we're going to die. This is something, you can say probably it's the only thing which is guaranteed in life, that we're going to die. So, yes, yes. So, so what is going to happen after we die? So we believe the messengers informed us of this. Uh, with this, so I mentioned some of the messengers we believe in, but we believe the previous messages, oh, I better take this off. The previous messages were actually either forgotten or changed. Or, yeah, either forgotten or changed. So then God would send another messenger, another messenger. So we believe after Jesus, we believe in Jesus, but we believe that he was a messenger to the lost sheep and the children of Israel to call them back to the laws of Moses and to worship God. But we don't believe Jesus was God. And we don't believe that, uh, a hu in human sacrifice. We don't believe that God requires a human sacrifice in order to forgive mankind. We believe directly we seek forgiveness, we admit our sins, we regret our sins, and then we seek forgiveness and we're forgiven. But we believe because the message of Jesus was corrupted, that they made him that he was God or he was the Son of God or one of three in the Trinity, that he was a human sacrifice, then we believe after him, uh, 600 years later, that God sent a, another messenger, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But where the previous messengers were sent to a particular time or a particular place, we believe that he's the last messenger for all mankind. Okay. So it's not going to be another one? No. And the reason being because the Quran mentions in chapter 15, verse 9, Inna nahnu nazalna dhikra wa inna lawla hafidun. Uh, we have sent down the reminder. Here we, uh, meaning God, but of the we of majesty. We have sent down the reminder, meaning the Quran, and we will protect it. So because the, the Quran has been protected, has been preserved, and also the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, have been preserved. Also, it mentions in Quran, chapter 5, verse 3, it mentions that on this day I have completed my favor upon you. I have completed my, sorry, on this day, this is when um, the Prophet Muhammad was alive. Have you ever come across Hajj? Yes. It's like the pilgrimage which we make once in a lifetime to Mecca. Oh, yeah, of course. So, yeah. The, the, yes. Yeah. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, the, the year before he died, he performed this pilgrimage. There's a day called Yawm al-Arafah. It's the day of Arafah. It's the most important day in Hajj. So what we believe is this verse was revealed to him on this day. It's about 80 days before he died. And it says, on, where Allah says, on this day, I have completed your religion for you. It's complete. Right. Everything which you need to know, everything which you need to do in life, everything which is harmful for you, I have completed it for you. Uh, and I've completed my favor upon you. So we understand human beings have many favors. Uh, wealth, family, loved ones, uh, good health. Inshallah, inshallah, salaam alaykum. But the greatest favor is to know who is God and what does he want from us. And then it mentions, and Allah says, and I'm pleased for you that your religion should be Islam. So three, three things happened. The, the religion was completed, the favor was completed, and the only religion which is accepted is Islam. So, I just want to get. So this is what, because the the point being. So because you asked, is he the last messenger? Because the religion is completed, and it's pre preserved, and it's for all mankind. There's not. There's actually no need for another messenger. Yeah, that makes sense. So, how does that sound so far? Yeah, it's just nice seeing a different perspective on things. Okay, but does it make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. And also I mentioned that um, the Quran mentioned in the Deen in the Allah Islam that verily the religion of Allah is Islam. Or in another verse it mentions Islam If anybody desires or chooses a way of life other than Islam, it will not be accepted from them. And in the hereafter they will be amongst the losers, which is obviously a very exclusive claim. But you'll find all religions generally they have an exclusive claim. 
that the human being, we, be, we have been given intelligence. So, you know, like if, if a person wishes to do well in life, uh, they seek education, college, university. We know that even people, they will travel from one side of the country to the other, or people from travel, travel from one side of the world to the other in order to better their life. But the intelligence we have, it should be able to uh, come to the conclusion of what is life, what, what is the purpose of life. So, the reason why we would say that Islam is the only religion which is acceptable, because all the other religions we say they have been uh, distorted or changed. Okay. So, for example, Christianity. We believe uh, Jesus was a messenger and he told people to worship one God and one God alone. But they made him into a God. So we'd say that this is gone astray. Uh, Moses, Abraham, we, were, we believe they came with the same way of life, worship one God and follow the way of the messengers. But the people, they made it into an exclusive religion. Only if you're from this, uh, this bloodline. Yeah, it's like a race, isn't it? Only if you're from this race, you are the chosen people. And everyone else is outside. I mean, they're not condemning everyone else, but they're saying that the God, like if, if you read the Old Testament, you will constantly find the God of Israel, the God of the Hebrews. And it's, it's very exclusive, which doesn't include other people. So we would say that this is a, a distortion. And then if you look at other religions where they worship idols or etc., you, you, will, you will find some some reason why it can't be true. So, let's say, just for argument's sake, you just don't have any access to Islam. You've yeah. never heard about it, but yeah. you've lived a really pure life. Yeah. You're a good person, morally, ethically, all of that. Yeah. But you've just never, it's like you've lived under a rock. Like, you, yeah. the part of the world where there's just no Islam. Yeah. What happens then? What does, how, does, how does Allah respond to that? Does he, does he still accept you in, or? Uh, I would say, Two things. One, it doesn't affect you because you live in London in 2023. Yeah. So that's, we'll put you to the side. But I can't remember the Arabic because the, uh, the thing is the Quran is in Arabic. When we say in English or in Spanish or in Italian, or we'd say this is only a translation. So this particular verse I've forgotten in Arabic, but it's in uh, chapter 17 where it mentions that that Allah will not punish until he sent a messenger. So the, the message has to be delivered to a person. So if a, if a person, for example, but we would say that a person cannot worship idols because this is something which um, no human being can actually accept. It's very common, but most people, when they do, if, if you find someone, for example, they cut down a tree and then they will use this tree maybe to build their house, maybe for firewood, and then one part of it, they will make a statue. Yeah. And then they pray to that statue. We'd say it's, it's inconceivable for that person to actually believe that this statue is God mm -hmm. and deserves to be worshipped, that this statue can harm me or this statue can benefit me. So we'd say that this, ha this is no excuse, regardless of uh, if a person heard about Quran, if they heard about Islam, if they heard about messengers, we'd say this has no excuse. But if a person, they, they try to live the, a good life, and they don't, the message doesn't come to them, then we say this person will not be punished because they, the proof hasn't been established against them. Okay. But this person will be tested on the day of judgment. Okay. And, and, how, and how the test turns out is how they, uh, they will live eternity. There's, there's an interesting uh, verse in Quran in uh, chapter 7. It mentions that, you know, Adam, uh, uh, as in Adam and Eve. Yeah. So Adam, our father, Allah mentions that before Adam was placed in this world, Allah took all of the souls from the loin of Adam, Adam. So all of us basically, all mankind, and we were placed in front of Allah. Not as, not as we are now, but as the souls. And we were asked, Alas to be Rabbikum, am I not your Lord? Qalu bala. And all of the people said yes. And then connected to this, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he taught, Kullu mawludin yulid ala fitra. Every child who's born is born in a natural state. That natural state to recognize one God. And then their family may change them to Jew or Christian or fire worshiper. But human beings are, they're in that natural state. As Muslims, we accept this. And even if you, if you think reasonably, you'll find that most people, they do believe in one God. But they've actually, uh, 
you know, some academics, they've actually studied this. And they said that when you uh, speak to most children, without mentioning God or without mentioning religion, but certain questions like uh, purpose, like does the sun have a purpose? Most children will say, yes, the sun has a purpose to give light, to give heat. The rain has a purpose, you know, so the, the crops will grow, so etc. Et and they say this fact that we actually give a purpose for things, it's very clear that we recognize that something, there is a creator, and an intelligent creator. Because if you look at atheism, or those people who, they reject God, or they say there is no God, or even they, they say they're not sure, they will actually have to say that all of these things, they came about randomly, and the purpose is just a, a side benefit. The sun happens to be there, and it happens to follow a cycle of the seasons, the day and the night, and it happens to give light, and it happens to give heat, but it's an accident. So, so they said basically by, by the fact that children recognize a purpose in most things around them, it shows that, uh, what would you say, hardwired. We are hardwired to believe in God. Okay. Assuming, and even and we're choosing, and people are choosing to sort and, of pass yeah. aside religion. Yeah, and it's going against what sort of natural. Yeah, is. and because people will say, for example, oh, because you're brought up in this country, you think like this. Because you're brought up in that, but this is actually quite universal. I, I think because, as you can say, I'm English. I think because we're brought up in uh, in England, which is a very, um, it's a free society, it's a very secular society especially Europe because you know they had a fight between the church and state or yeah. church and science and it appeared that science won. So because we're brought up very free, we, are, we, we don't necessarily give importance to religion. We, most English people, they give importance to being kind, being nice, being helpful, being honest, working hard. Obviously we have uh, some rotten apples, but most people are like this, but they don't give importance to God. But most people actually, when you, when you push them, like if we take you for an example, I think most of the things which I've said, they actually, they seem to make sense. So, and then in, in other societies, even if they're brought up worshiping idols, there, there's a very, uh, it's a small story. It mentions that a, a person used to worship idols. And then one day, when, as he was worshiping his idol, he saw a dog came and urinated on the idol. So the person became so angry and began to run after the dog, wanting to punish the dog. How can you urinate on my God? As he's running, as he's running, the person thinks to himself, what am I doing? This, this statue cannot help itself. It cannot protect itself. So why am I angry? So the point being this, uh, we're hardwired to recognize one God. Like we're hardwired to uh, know that honesty is good, looking after the elderly is good, being kind is good, lying is bad, we're hardwired. So okay. that is the basic message of Islam. Okay. I would love to chat to you more, honestly, I'm really enjoying this conversation. No problem. We'll get to work. Thank Where, you so much for chatting to me. Can I give you a Quran to read? Yeah. Okay, one moment. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Are you local? Uh, I live in Woolwich. Okay, not so far. I'm half an hour away. Okay. But there's always things going on here. Yeah. Um, I work most weekdays, but I work every other Saturday. And there's always, um, there's always it's something. Quite, it's just quite a busy. Yes, 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 I yes. See this stand is up every Saturday. Oh, these brothers, yeah. Yeah, they, these guys seem to be. Yeah, they're our neighbours. Yeah, this is our stand. This but, is your stand there. Yeah, I mean, they have a lot more books and stuff like this. Anyway, this is the Quran and some leaflets. We're here every Saturday. Any questions? Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank What's you very much for your time. You, sir. You, sir. Yeah, and you're Jay. Jay. Nice to meet All you. the best. Thank you very thank much for your time. Much. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Have a good day, buddy. You too, thank you.